he's been talking to those residents today. John, some of the people you spoke with had seen the suspect before yesterday's shooting. They did, and they talked about that a lot this afternoon. You know, Paris Street is just one street over from where we are. Holmes apartment building actually faces Paris Street, and the people of that street, the people who live along Paris Street, are frustrated that this neighbor they never knew was somehow able to hold a community hostage from his jail cell. Uh, it is uh, scary. The people of Paris Street watched explosives experts do their jobs at James Holmes' apartment just down the street. It's a tragedy. Astonished. They speak of how hard they've worked fighting crime and drug dealers, but this? It frightens me. You know, you never know who's in your backyard. You know, I'm from New York, you know, and I have never seen nothing like this, ever, ever. Carl Allen and Rosando Casals say a week ago Wednesday, a man they now know was Holmes, approached them, asking if there were any vacancies in their small apartment building. They wonder now why he might have been in the market for a new apartment, and they can't forget him and wish they could. We always watch each other's back, so, you know, when you get a stranger walking through, we always question them because you just don't know who that person is. And look. And I remember just his eyes, just that's what caught me in the, and you know, just the distinguished look in his face. What about his eyes? He just looked like he was had a cold look. And they say that their hair stood on end when they saw the photo that was released yesterday, recognized him immediately as Holmes, the man who was walking down their street the week before last. They've been without power, they've been without air conditioning during this operation because police have cut off the power to this neighborhood while the firefighters and ATF agents were inside. But they have nothing but praise for the work that police and firefighters are doing. And again, they say their thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their families. Reporting live from Aurora, John Shurek for 9 News. Thanks, John, so much.